so that instead of people being compelled to read through the blueprint of the songs, instead of them looking at the dance steps ahead of time, they would just go through the dance. Just so that they would let the songs happen to them. Later on, they'll find out what the meaning is. But for now, I mean, you know, we're, we're just meeting for the first time, and it's, it's better, I don't know, it's better to grab your own reality from it right now. Instead of like, you know, read, when I read lyrics, I'm always like, <laughs> you know, looking for the chorus, and I'm, re- and I'm forgetting the whole experience. There's a kind of research in your music. A research? Yes, in a sounds with your particular voice. Mm-hmm. Is there something that you want to communicate in particular? Um, yes, but it doesn't have a language with which I can communicate it. The things that I want to communicate are, are, are simply uh, self-evident emotional things. And the gifts of those things uh, is that they bring both intellectual and emotional gifts, understanding. But I don't really have a, a major message that I want to bring to the world through my music. The music can tell people everything they need to know about being human beings. It's not my information. It's not mine. I didn't make it up. I just discovered it. Some days ago, the press reminded us of the great musical event called the Live Aid that Bob Geldof organized 10 years ago. Did you see it or not? No, I just didn't see it. I would like for the starvation and oppression to to end in Africa. Mm. I'd like for money from from concerned people to, to go there, you know, to go to Africa to aid. But the real, I think the real solution will come from Africa ruling Africa and not Britain ruling Africa, not America ruling Africa. That's the only real key. If Africa rules Africa, that's the only way that that pattern of oppression from the outside can be stopped. Not money. Mm. Not only money. Money is money's a tool and it can be, I don't know, I, I really don't... I, if I, if I did participate in, in Live Aid, I, I would have to be satisfied that the money was being tunneled mm-hmm. to the right places. And if I wasn't, I, would, I'd still, I wouldn't be able to get any sleep after mm-hmm. that. I would have mm-hmm. to know. It's great that Mandela came out and took, took office in Africa. I think it's, that, that's the real revolution. So what does it mean to you belong to a place so people, given that you have always moved from a place to place? I see. Well, I don't know. I don't know what belonging means. You don't know that. Maybe later I will, but I don't mm. know now. I can only see. I can only use my brain and intellectualize. I really don't. Wouldn't be able to tell you from the heart what belonging means. There's no link between you and a place, between you and a particular person. My memories of that place are my link to the place. Memories of your experience in a place is your link. You belong to the world. All people belong to the world. There's no exclusivity in that. In a particular place, you mean? Well, you know, I mean, the soil from America can differ from the soil in Malaysia, but its soil is still the same. And the color of people's skin can differ from place to place, but it's still skin. And in that regard, there's no difference. People must belong to the earth. And a traveler must belong to the world somehow, and the world must belong to her or him somehow. But you know, then there's the social, then there's the social level. That's, that's just the that's just the archetypal level. Mm-hmm. People usually live in a social level. I have no advice for anybody except to, you know, be awake enough to see where you are at any given time, and how that is beautiful, and has poetry inside, even places you hate. Sometimes uh, in our life uh, it happens that we stop believing the dream with pers before. Mm-hmm. If it, it never happened to you, can you tell me how did you go on? I mean having dreams and then having them dry up, like childhood dreams? I don't the... know, and you think about what you want to do. Uh-huh. So sometimes you don't believe. So now you say, oh, no, I don't want to do that, I don't believe anymore. Yeah, you can have, it's part of maturity to project upon your life goals and project upon your life realized dreams and a, and a result that you want. It's part of becoming whole that you do this, just like a childish game. 
it's honest. It's an honest game because you really, you know, you want something. You want your life to hold hope and possibility. It's just that when you get to the real meat of life, is that life has its own rhythm, and you cannot impose your own structure upon it. You have to listen to what it tells you, and you have to listen to what your path tells you. It's not earth that you move with a tractor. Life is not like that. Life is more like earth that you learn about and plant seeds in. You know what I'm saying? It's something you have to have a relationship with in order to experience. You can't mold it. You can't control it. Just like men can't control women. So yes, I've had dreams die like dogs. <laughs> I've been very unhappy. <laughs> But other things are coming, and I appreciate them. And they're magic. It's fuck. Magic, magic, magic. Yes. How do you find the energy when I'm playing? Yes. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It's purely because I, uh, you know, just I want to. I want to have a good time on stage. I want something to happen. So my body just rises to the occasion. I don't really take the best care of myself, mm -hmm. but I do enough so that I can survive. It just happens. It just, uh, you know. And some nights I have really bad nights. I just have very bad nights sometimes. But I just, uh, I like, I like playing so well. You know, I like that experience so so much that. I just rise to it. And of course, afterwards, my defenses come down and I get sicker than ever. And as you can see, I'm a complete mess. I can't even form a, a good sentence. Can't even think. Do you like uh, going around the world and seeing so many different yes. cities? Yes. Definitely. Very much. Do you follow always your real nature, your instinct? Um, no. And when I don't, I become ill. You have to do that. Everybody does. And when they don't, They become unhappy, and mm. people are very, un mm. very talented at being unhappy for a long time. That happens to me too. Do you think sorrow could be a way to find rare inspiration? Yes, but even, even a more special, rarer, long-lasting inspiration is through joy. But the answer is yes. Through sorrow, yes. At the end, are you thinking about a new CD? All the time. <laughs> Several CDs. Yes. <laughs> A lot of yes. Can you say of. something about the next? Or no? Um. This is the new, the first song. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It will be called. I don't even know if I should tell you the title. It'll be you know the band has evolved, the music has evolved, my musicality has evolved. It'll just be something different than Grace. So I want to thank you very much. Sure. Are you on the show? Yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Jeff Buckley with Luisa Cotardo. <laughs> no.